Uh, God wants us to be filled. God wants us to be cleaned. God wants us to be usable and to be used in his service. Uh, this was the plea and the picture that Jeremiah saw uh, with God pleading with Israel in this very picture. We read about it in Jeremiah chapter 18. It says in verse 1, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. The vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so that he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as the potter, saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the hand of the potters. Uh, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. And then it goes on, and I think in similar tunes, it, it gives this picture, and if you could picture the hand impression of the potter coming to the clay, and, and, and in the clay, there's this stick, there's this stone, there's this marring, and it's marred in the hand of the potter, not by the hand of the potter. And it has to, uh, the work be stopped, and there has to be a cutting away and a punching down, and a, and 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 the uh, then the remaking and the reshaping. Oh Israel, this plea cannot I do with you? And then verse seven goes on. At what instant? And if you can think of the the hand uh, pressing, I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy. It, if that nation against whom I have pronounced Turn from their evil. I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and a kingdom to build up and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight and it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. And I just see in that uh, picture there, speaking to the nation, uh, the continuation of the potter's imagery of the impressions that are made and the responses that are made of the clay to the hand of the potter. And I'd like you to think about the response that we might have uh, to God Almighty. Uh, the potter's house uh, was attached to the king's house, and the commissioning was to make vessels for the king, beautiful and usable, glorious, pure, presented vessels uh, would be there uh, for the king to use uh, in the palace. And this picture is is given as Jeremiah goes down and he, he peers over the potter's uh, shoulder, if you will, and sees the lump of clay. And that's all we are, aren't we? We're just a lump of clay that God takes and he molds and he makes and he puts us on the wheel. Some have described the wheel as the circumstances of our life as it spins and then the hand of God uh, coming and the impressions and the, and the great design and desire that God has for us. Uh, this is a beautiful picture. And then this plea, O Israel, cannot I do with you as the potter? And so the call for us to be willing to, to be yielded to this uh, uh, potter's uh, working in our life. Is God working in your life, molding, shaping, moving, using you uh, and I in our lives? Is he doing that with our church? Uh, out of Jeremiah, a beautiful picture of the potters. And then the, the plea of the potter, uh, cannot I do, the plea of God, cannot I do with you as the potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. And I remember that verse first coming into, as Jeremiah was a favorite book of mine in Bible college days, uh, I remember just taking a pen. In fact, one day I found the Bible that I had uh, worn and torn uh, back then and, and, and saw the big three letters Y-E-S written over that verse, verse 6. What would you and I write? Uh, would you have the response in Jeremiah of, yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do. Turn, if you would, to 2 Timothy in the New Testament. And another picture uh, in the New Testament of this very same thing. In 2 Timothy, Paul is being used of God to mold and shape young Timothy. And words of God are coming through his pen uh, to the heart of Timothy. And he 
calls to him, Thou therefore my son, in verse 1 of chapter 2, be strong in the Lord. And then he goes into this imagery of the potter. Uh, in verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will, or the idea uh, to do his will. And so two wills are in contrast here, one God's and one the enemy's. Uh, two wills are at battle here, and at battle in your mind, and at battle in your life and mind, uh, for this shaping, the molding, the making, or the uh, the staining and the the um, the marring and and the 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 the, the destroying, the breaking, uh, the hardening. And, and so we see this contrast here. And I wonder if you would uh, just hear again that song echo, Lord, make of me a vessel, pure and holy in your eyes, a vessel that you can always use. Lord, uh, uh, by tribulations and by trials, Lord, you mold me. Lord, make of me a vessel, and, and that we would have that printed over our lives, this vessel sanctified, the word holy, uh, and meet for the master's use. I wonder, does that, does that come as a, as a desire in your life? Could you pray that? Uh, do you live that? Would you desire that? Would you ask of God that? And in these moments, as we go through this scripture, mainly the one in 2 Timothy, uh, would you have a desire to say, Lord, just take my life. Take my life. God's not finished with any one of us yet. Amen? From the youngest here, <clears throat> Graceland, Fudgekins, hi. Yeah. To the oldest. Now, I'm not going to look around. <laughs> I'm not going to make any enemies today. I'm not going to do any guesses. Uh, but would you say, Lord, you're not finished with me. Lord, you have a desire for me uh, to work and to move and to make of me a vessel. And so in this passage of Scripture, I would like you just to, to see, uh, first of all, this desire in this uh, passage um, uh, and have our life, your life, my life uh, infused with a desire, a desire. That's where it, where it all starts. I, I, I read that passage of Scripture and I wonder how it hits you. And I would assume that it hits every one of us differently. With some, uh, say, okay, you know, well, you know, I'm putting in my church time in. No, not in this crowd. You're the up early at Sunday morning. God, I want to greet you today and meet you today. But, but it could be that, that out of routine, out of ritual, out of, out of uh, just, just routine, we go through the motions. And, and instead of being infused with desire, if, if I just read this passage of scripture in a great house and 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 the 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 idea the imagery is that of a, an expensive house that of a that of a well endowed house a furnished house that a house with a china cabinet okay <laughs> i don't know if you have a china cabinet i don't know if you have some special special utensils some special silverware some special dishes uh some special china that when those special guests come you break them out you break them out because there is a special use today uh, that is uh, more than the ordinary. It's more than the common. It's something that uh, is is a highlight day, and we're gonna break out the best. and 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 I wonder if if that imagery could 
could swell in our in our minds. There's a there's a vessel unto honor, an honorable vessel. This goblet, this golden, this uh, precious, this fine, uh, this special, this expensive, this valuable. This is in a great house. But there is also vessels uh, unto dishonor. Uh, there's common vessels. Uh, there's there's um, filthy or dirty or dishonorable uh, vessels. Uh, uh, some uh, some for the fine meals. Others to take out the garbage. <laughs> okay. now, now, if you if you took the garbage can and put it on the dining room table for us to eat the soup out of, you'd say you better have cleaned it well. <laughs> You better scrub it up. And, and, and so this, this progression from the dishonorable to the honorable that's, that's in this passage of Scripture, but I would trust there's a pricking of desire. Lord, let me be that honorable vessel out of this New Testament passage. Lord, let me be sanctified and set apart and used for your honor and glory. Out of the Old Testament passage, a big Y-E-S. Lord, cannot I do with you as the potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. That God has a purpose, God has a plan, God has a desire, God has a design for us. He wants us to be beautiful and he wants us to be usable. But in a great house, uh, commentary is made. There are vessels of different value. And there is a graduation of those vessels. Uh, and there must be a desire. And I wonder if you have a, a desire. A desire to be, to be set apart. These are utensils of various kinds. They're that for use, not just for show. Uh, some of honor, some of dishonor, some repulsive, some for garbage and filthy waste, some as treasure, some as precious. And so we have this treasure, Paul's taught in other passages of Scripture, in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. It's, it's, not, it's not of us. The treasure is not the container. The treasure is what goes in the container. And the treasure is the gospel and the word of God. And God wants a usable container for the treasure. And that's you and I. And we ought to inspire and aspire to this. Desire, a desire to be set apart. This word uh, is in verse 21. If a man will purge himself from these things, a, a cleansing process, there is... Uh, a, a responsibility of the purging of yourselves. He shall be a vessel unto honor, special, honorable use. Sanctified, set apart is the idea. Meet for the master's use. Something, something set apart as holy and as clean. Now, maybe you have um, special cups in your house. I am a travel mug buff. And for a mug to graduate to my favorite mug, it takes quite, quite a process. And in the invention of all mugs and travel mugs, there has been certain steps. None of them have hit the home run with a lid that can't be lost. <laughs> I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't found the detachable lid that reattaches that can make it through the dishwasher and safely. So, so I don't know if the perfect mug exists and for me going through and rifling through the drawer trying to find a lid for that mug but i i have i have a couple mugs that that i've been given one i stole basically because i liked it so much visiting the dear lady of the house said just keep it i said no 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 and she insisted and so i made a prayer deal that i'll pray for her <laughs> she appreciated that and for her husband um, if I kept the mug, and I still have that mug, and it's it's graduated to, to special. But when somebody else uses it, and I go and am ready to find it and use it, and it's dirty, it's like, oh, who used my mug? Not that I'm being possessive or 
would be selfish in any such. <laughs> but I'm just confession here. But there's a there's a special set apart monk, and it's 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 special. I'd like you to think of that um, as God desires to work in in our lives and through our lives. Special, set apart, uh, set apart for God. Do you? Does that do anything to you? That that God wants Steve to be set apart, and 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 it. And it's at Valley Farm, and it's at it's in Center Valley and Saucon Valley, or wherever that is you live off uh, 378. It's 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 special that God has a special set apart task for Ruthie today, and and for Carrie and for Kimmy and for 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 Mom, okay, and for Kay. And I'm just picking on a few on these sides, and I'll leave this side alone. But God has a special desire for you to be set apart for his use. And it's a vessel unto honorable. It's something that, that is in honor, uh, maybe not by the world, in this world, uh, but by God both now and forever. Honorable, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful. And, and you've been pure and you've been holy and you've been available and you've been usable and, and used by God and for God, sanctified and meet or fit, suited, ready for the master's use and prepared unto every good work that in every type of situation there might just be this perfect fitting of the vessel to the situation for the glory of God. Does that well up any desire in your life? I pray that it would. That just the thought that, that God in eternity wants to break into time, into your day and your space and my space and use you at Vacation Bible School to help with those art projects, okay? To use you, uh, uh, help you uh, clean this church today and run a vacuum sleeper, sleeper. Where? Yes, sweeper, sleeper. No, not a sleeper. Don't do that now. But to, to, to use you. Uh, to plug a few computer keystrokes and put it up on the net and see what happens. Okay. And, and, and just for the glory of God, that we would be used of God and we'd have a passion and a desire and a mission in our life set apart for God. If we would have this thinking in our mind and realize that there's a battle for this, that, that the devil has an agenda too. And he would love to neutralize that and poison that and pollute that and, and, and taint that somehow. In fact, he'd like to not only taint it, but to totally disqualify it from the master's use and from God's use and then employ and deploy in, in, in his own. And the enemy is present there in this passage of scripture. And there's this fight and this battle going on. But God wants us to be set apart for him, set apart for him. That we'd have an attitude and a desire in our heart uh, that is filling and thrilling our heart that I am set apart for God. Wow, that's a mission. Not only then set apart for God, uh, but a desire uh, to be set afire and to be used of God, to be used of God. Uh, 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 a, a burning, a burning on and a burning I would say burning out, but don't burn out. <laughs> we are the wood that gives light. We are the vessel that is used up for the glory of God. One pastor in commenting about some challenges and being gnawed at and chewed at and some, some challenges in life and ministry, he just gave this image that, 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 we are the wood. We are, we are, we are being burnt up to, to give light and to give blessing and to give warmth uh, to others. And so we're, we're not the important part. The important part is not the, the vessel, though it's used and, and it has importance and is right, but the, the real importance is, the, is the, the juice that the vessel would contain to be drink. Uh, we have a treasure in earthen vessels. Nothing too special, nothing too valuable, but yet very important for the use is uh, the special treasure inside the vessel. And so we need to be set afire in our heart to be used of God, prepared unto every good work. I wonder if you greet your Monday morning like that. Lord, use me today. Lord, let me be a blessing. Let me be a vessel. Fill my heart with passion and desire. Let me be a vessel, pure and holy, 
uh, perfect in your eyes, useful to the Lord, something that is clean and purged and vigorously scoured because it's going to be used by the master, something that is set afire to be used of God to give light. This is, this is to be infused with desire, with desire. Right now, there's a, there's a desire meter going on right now, you know? It's from ho-hum to sign me up. <laughs> it's, it's from, okay, you know, I believe it because I see it, but it doesn't seem like it's for me, um, to, Lord, Lord, today, take my life and use me. Lord, I want to be clean. I want to be holy. I want to be set apart, not for the world and for the flesh and for the devil, but to be set apart from all of that for you. And so it begins. It begins with a desire. And then I see in this passage of Scripture, secondly and finally, a, a design that involves us. Now, the, the design is, is God, and I, and I want to give the glory to God and the, and the, uh, the, the, the ability to God and, and, and the responsibility to God. But yet I find in this divine human type of uh, that God did not create us as robots and just clock wind us up and, and, and there it is with no response and, and no choice and no participation and no responsibility. In fact, I'd like you to think about that word for a moment, if you would, um, that, that, that we are involved in uh, the design here in this sense, flee also youthful lust, but follow uh, charity and faith and peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And, and if a man will purge himself from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and, and meet for the master's use. Uh, it, it, it is God. It is God. Uh, hath not the power, potter power over the clay to make vessels of his choosing, but yet the vessels have fitted themselves for uh, destruction and, and for God's glory. Uh, God's glory. He wants us to hear a passage of scripture like this and have uh, not only a desire, but this, this participation in the work that's ongoing by a heart response. And I'd like to, to challenge you to that through this scripture. Flee also youthful lusts. Wow. There's the, there's the part of the design. Uh, if a man therefore will purge himself from these, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's it, pure and simple, that the design involves a fleeing from that which would hinder us and trip us up at any time. Uh, the Lord knoweth them that are his, the Bible says the foundation of God standeth sure in this verse, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. That's, that's God's uh, knowledge. It's an intimate knowledge. It's a personal knowledge. It's a knowledge of, of, of his own children. Do you know Christ as your personal Savior? Does he know you as his child? There is a, there's a bottom line. Do you belong to God? Does he have a personal, intimate knowledge and relationship with you, a divine seal of authenticity uh, that, that God, God knows? God knows them that are his. And, and you can know. You can know. And one of the ways that we know is this desire to be like our designer, this desire to fulfill a design of God. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you can't, you're not, okay? And if you, and, and I, I just had this thought here, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ, if you do name the name of Christ, you must depart from iniquity. This is what God calls us to. It's a life of holiness. It's a life of victory over sin. It's a life of saying no to youthful lust, the youthful passions which haunt and plague us in old age. Amen? When do, you, when do you get rid of youthful lusts and youthful passions? It could be that of indulgence. It could be that of the anger. It could be that of, of, uh, of the pride that Paul was trying to deal with in Timothy's life. It, it could be that of the, of the, 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 the 
contention that might be had uh, with other people as Paul uh, talks about the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle uh, to all and, and to not have a, 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 uh, a picking on the needless quarrelsome uh, questions. Young Timothy, uh, don't do that. Why? Uh, because there is a, 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 a tender instructing of those that oppose themselves. That's the way Paul puts it. It's like they're beating their head against the wall and they don't even know it. And that's our world today. They're running into a brick wall. They're blindedly going over a cliff and they have no clue as to what a holy God says. And, and God says, if peradventure through this uh, uh, declaration, through this use of a vessel that gives the word of God to a needy generation, they may recover themselves from the snare of the devil that are taken captive by him at his will to do his will. This is the, the devil's snare to, to take captive those who are, have their senses uh, dulled to the chains, to the youthful passions. And so there's this desire here of, of turning from God, from sin to God, a, a turning from, the, from the, the, the youthful lusts and the youthful passions. And, and so uh, are you saved? You, you must. Let him that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Um, there is a debate that runs, you know, can a saved person sin? Oh, man, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we have an advocate. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have a new relationship with God and a new relationship with the Word of God and a new relationship with the people of God and a new relationship with the Spirit of God that indwells our heart. And the Bible says, if you name the name of Christ, then come out of the mud pit and, and live a life that pleases God, fleeing youthful passions. One uh, other parallel passage says, youthful lust which war against our souls, which war against our souls. And so... Uh, to flee. Usually running is considered cowardly, but I tell you what, it takes all the spiritual strength and all the spiritual grit that you can muster to run away from sin. It's not cowardly to run away from sin. It'll be the hardest. It'll be the toughest thing that you've ever done, but it'll be the right thing. It's hard to turn it off, to shut it down. It's hard to, it's hard to say no. It's hard to not feed it. The passions of youthful lust, which war against our soul, the temptation that takes courage and action uh, to remove ourselves, even physically, to not feed and fuel the desires that would, that would dictate our lives. To Timothy, it might have been that of contention or favoritism, of egotism or of sexual indulgence or whatever types of pride uh, or uh, anger that might have come in. It could be anything that could engulf a young child and, 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 and it's fun watching children, isn't it? Oh, wow, <laughs> you see yourself. <laughs> it's funner being a grandparent to just be able to hand them back to the parents and and, and see them, you know, uh, we never had to teach them how to be bad. <laughs> I don't know. And you see that little anger tantrum, you know, and, and, and in that anger tantrum fit of that little kid is the murder, the robber, the rapist, the thief, uh, the, 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 the unruly person, uncontrolled and unbridled, uh, uncorrected. And oh, how, oh, how they need the, Restraint and the control, the discipline, the character, the molding, the shaping. And, and, and God says for us at any age to flee youthful lusts, which, which war against our soul. And so God is simply stating that he cannot use a dirty vessel. He cannot use a vessel that is unclean. You don't want to. You don't want to drink from it. 
there's probably a few germ freaks around here. <laughs> probably. <clears throat> and and I, I, I have this little signature on my on my water bottle. And it's 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 the G and then I make it into a P. And so it's G Pa all in one little thing. And and we have a thing at our house from my wife who has thrown away too many half used, three quarter used them. She's thrown away too many. <clears throat> and and she says, please put your name on the cap. Please put your name on the cap. Now, I'm not a big germ freak, and the thirstier, the hungrier I am, the less, I'm sure. And in a desert, we'd forget it all. But, but, but just, you know, is it mine? There's a difference between this bottle that I know is mine, because I opened it today, and I put this on this morning in pink here. And there's a difference between this one and the one that's probably mine, but I'm not sure. It was left here last week. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not drinking it. And if we, to any degree, have that sense in us, could we, could we think about a holy God for a moment that has this great design and he has a greater desire than you and I have towards this towards you and I being a separated holy vessel unto the Lord. But there's a, there's a part that we have, and it's a, it's a part of fleeing, flee youthful lust, which war against our soul. It's, if you name the name of Christ, well, then, then great. But that's not it. Oh, I'm saved on my way to sin. Oh, I'm eternally secure. Don't, don't flaunt that. By the grace of God, we are not saved by our works, but we are saved to work for the Lord, and we are saved to live a holy life. And God wants us not on a shelf, if you will, useless, but he wants us involved and used in the work of God as a clean and holy vessel unto the Lord. It involves the gumption, it involves the heart, it involves the desire, it involves the, the details of fleeing the youthful lust which war against our soul. And, it's, and it's, it's the plain and simple statement that God cannot use a dirty vessel. And he wants us to be clean before him. And so this should be a holy desire that wells up within us. Lord, Lord, uh, uh, clean my life, clean my, my temple, Lord, clean the corners, clean uh, the nooks and the crevices and the cracks and the closets and the, and the under the carpets and the, Lord, find the stink that, that, that doesn't appear uh, uh, too obvious, but we know it's there because I can smell it, okay? Uh, Lord, Lord, take it and get it all out. And we know that there's a couple ways to clean something. One time, I had something spill in my car underneath the, uh, you know, the, the tire and I, the spare tire place. And I didn't know it, but I sure smelled it. <laughs> At one time, this is Subi 1 or Subi 2, but it had sat for a while and it was, and, and, and I just said, where? This is this is enough is enough, and I took out the seats and power washed this thing. I I drilled holes so that it would drain out uh, whatever in the future, and 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 just finally got at it type of thing. It's when we clean the vents and the filters and the the drains and the and the lines of, of our life that God really wants to bless us and use us. And, I wonder if there's a desire, because there certainly is a design, and the design then involves us, and it involves us fleeing, and, he, and there's this promise that he shall be a vessel. But I'm, I'm glad it's not just negative, and this is a negative part of the message. But don't miss it. Don't miss it. Put on your running shoes, Joseph, and flee the temptation. How do you get victory over sin? Don't feed it. Starve it. 
Can people really change? I opened my Bible and put a capital Y-E-S. Yes, they can. God can grant victory over any sin. But he wants us to put on our running shoes and not be the desire. But our life cannot be in a vacuum. It can't be just, you can't do this and you can't do this and you can't do this and you can't do this. That's not the way God designed a Christian life. He, he designed it to be in a positive following after God. Follow. Follow righteousness. Follow faith. Follow charity. Follow peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. This is the, the positive. What does God want me to be doing? He wants me to put one foot in front of the other in a righteous path. He wants me to put one foot in front of the other in building my faith. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? By the word of God. And so I should expose myself time and time again, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday morning, Monday night, to the word of God. Follow after charity, the showing of love, and follow after peace, and do it with somebody. Who is that? People that call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. And you're not the only one on this journey. And we need each other. Oftentimes on a Sunday morning, I'll get a text, go get them, preacher. No, it's not like that exactly, but it's something like that. It's something from a fellow pastor saying, praying for you today as you walk into that pulpit. Praying for the power of God. Praying for the Spirit of God to take the Word of God and work in your life today. And we're following God, not in a vacuum, and it's not alone. It's not alone. And we need the encouragement of one another, and God puts us in a family of believers, and he calls it an assembly of believers, a local church. And, it, and, it, and it, it, takes a, it takes a family of God to be raised for God. Oh, how I thank God for the influences of other Christians on my life. I thank God for the influence of you on my life. I pray that, I, I thank God for the influences of you on my children's lives and now my grandchildren's lives as they see your smiles and they hear and feel your love and encouragement what a blessing that is, incalculable blessing. Follow God, follow faith, follow love, follow righteousness with those that call upon God out of a pure heart. And you're not the only one that needs to, and you're not the only one that's doing it, and you're not the only one on this journey of the narrow way. So let's go forward together. Let's go forward together and follow God. And so this is, make of me a holy vessel. Is there a desire? Maybe our desire meter is, is at zero level because we don't really know the program. In fact, we haven't met the author. We haven't been placed, if you will, out of the miry clay onto the, will, uh, the wheel of the potter's uh, wheel in the master potters. And, and that, that placement, I just look at the digging and taking us from the miry clay as, as the salvation of our soul that God saves us and he takes us then and places us on the wheel. Salvation isn't it as far as the end and the all in all. It is the beginning of the work. Amen? And, and, but it's an important beginning. And we'll never have a desire and we'll never fulfill this design if you're not having a beginning where you know Christ as your personal savior from sin. And he lifts us from that miry clay, sets our feet upon a rock, establishes our going, puts a new song in our heart. And then I wonder if we could just then not only then be saved and know Christ as our personal Savior, but be excited with desire and design involved in this, in this potter's wheel going on. And all oh, that hurts and all oh, that bends and what's that water? Well, it's because I'm so hard and, 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 I don't want to look and be uh, forced into pressured and put and turned into this. And, and, and we trust an all-wise potter who's got a great design 
and great desire, even greater than ours for us. And he knows the beginning from the end. And he molds and moves and shapes and makes us uniquely and specially a vessel for his honor and glory. And at the end of it all, we say, Amen. And we just say, Hear my Lord, yes, do with me as the potter does with the clay.